In this tutorial, we'll discuss how to create musical marble videos like this one, that have become quite popular these days on social media. There is rigid body physics here, used together with a light and sound effect, and we're going to develop it with Blender, which is a powerful open source and free animation software. So before we do anything, we need to first create a single musical note, or a model like this, which can be used for this animation. So with our default cube, let's change the Y scale factor to say 0.7, and the Z scale factor to 0.2. Now we'll add a taper to this box, so in the modifiers tab, let's add a simple deform modifier. Then select the taper option, change this factor to 0.2, ensure that the X axis is selected, and then apply this modifier. We need to apply the scale factors as well, and then again in the modifiers tab, let's add a bevel modifier. The bevel amount can be 0.05, and we can have 5 segments for this bevel. Let's change its X location value, to say 1.4, so the main part is ready. Now we'll add a holder at this end, so let's go to the add menu, and add another cube. We'll resize this cube to make it smaller, there's nothing specific, just do it as you like for your design. And we'll move it toward the main part of our model, and then we need to join these two parts. So go to the Modifiers tab and add a modifier called Boolean Modifier. Use this Difference option, then select the bigger part in the target object and then apply this modifier. So we'll get a hollow part like this, we need to join it with the main part, but before that, we'll also add a cylindrical part here. So again go to the Add menu and let's add a cylinder. We need to rotate it to horizontal and make it a little smaller. We'll move it in the X direction as well, but let's first reduce its Z-scale factor to 0.05, and then change the X location, to place it just behind the other parts. Now select them together and apply the Shade Smooth option. Finally, we have to join these individual parts through a parent-child relation, so select all the parts like this, and select this main part at the very end. Then press Ctrl-P to bring this menu, and select this option, to make this as the parent for all other parts. Now if we move this main part or the note, they'll move together. Or, if we rotate this, the whole thing will rotate together like a single object. Now, we can simply copy this note, and create a series of several such notes, and then the next steps will follow. So, press 3, on the number pad of your keyboard, to go to the left side view, so that the Y axis is here and the Z axis is here. In this side view, we'll create a series of many such notes, and we'll drop a ball like this, which will gradually move this way through these notes. So let's again go to the Add menu, and add a UV sphere for the ball. But we need to make it smaller in size, and we'll also move it up, so we'll change its Z location to say 6. We want the ball to fall on this note due to gravity, and then bounce through the other notes, but we can see that we need to also move it this way, to drop it on the center of our note, so we'll modify its X location value as appropriate, to bring it to the center position, and then go back to the side view mode. Then for our ball, let's go to the physics tab and enable the rigid body physics. This should be an active type rigid body, and we can change the collision shape to sphere from this drop down. Then under the surface response, we'll remove the friction value completely, and change this bounciness to say 0.75. Similarly for the note, enable rigid body physics, but this should be a passive type object. We'll change the collision shape to box type for simplicity, then let's remove the friction value like before, and the bounciness can be 0.7. But if we run this to test the setup, we'll see that the ball does not actually bounce. So we have to rotate this note slightly, just to make an inclination, that will cause a deflection, and this time, the ball will bounce just as we want. Now, the most difficult part. We'll create here another note, and we need to ensure that the ball hits this note after bouncing from the first one. To make this job slightly easier, we'll split this editor into two parts. Then for the middle one, let's go to the Scene tab, and under Rigid Body Physics, let's expand the section called Cache. If we change the end frame of our animation, to say 500, we must have the same change in this Cache section as well. We'll use this Calculate option quite often, so let's keep this Calculate section visible in this middle panel. And in the lower part, scroll down to Surface Response because we need to manipulate these fields. Now box select this note, duplicate it with Shift-D, and move it to any position with your mouse. You can rotate the note whatever way you like, then hit this Calculate to Frame, and play the animation once more. It looks perfect, so we'll place our third note. Let's go a couple of frames down the line, 
Then create another copy of our note, and place it right here, so that it overlaps with the ball. Now hit on the calculate button, and we can go back and forth to ensure that the physics is working exactly as we need. If we want a little more bounce from any step, we need to increase the bounciness value for that note, so let's make it 0.75. And before we test it again, we have to calculate the physics, only then the changes will take effect. So we may need to either change the bounciness, or the location, or the rotation of the notes for our desired result. For this third note as well, let's increase the bounciness to say 0.75. Then we have to calculate it again, and this same process has to be followed for all other steps, or all the musical notes, that we want to add in this composition like a series. Let's say we want this ball to follow a path like this, while hitting the musical notes. So we spend a lot more time to perfectly design this whole scene, but it pays off when you see the final result. We have used a total of 23 musical notes, you can use even hundreds of them, if you have that much patience. Now, if we play this from the beginning, we'll see that the ball is coming down, following the path that we have designed. Then there are two important things to consider for a good result. First in the output properties, we have a field called frame rate. So whatever physics we can see here, is specific to this frame rate. Later if we change this value to say 30, and then render this output, we'll discover that the actions are happening a little faster. And the second thing is, Blender's rigid body physics is not very stable, sometimes it can change abruptly. So we should ideally bake it to keyframes once everything is finalized. Let's select the ball, then go to the object menu, and under rigid body, select the option called bake to keyframes. Here we need to change our frame range if needed, and hit the OK button. It will convert the movements of the ball into a keyframe, for each of the frames like this within the start frame and the end frame, and we can also see that the rigid body physics has been removed from this ball, so everything is now driven by the keyframes, like a normal animation, no physics is involved. But it will give us the exact same output, and it is highly stable, the only thing is, you can't change it later, everything is now permanent. We can also remove the rigid body physics from the musical notes, so let's select all of them together using a box select. Then remove the rigid body physics for them, using this option. Let's add a background for this scene, with a simple plane. We need to turn it to vertical, enlarge it as needed, then place it behind the musical notes like this, and we can hide the floor from our viewport display. So here we go with our complete setup, as far as the modeling part is concerned, although we are not done yet. It looks really beautiful and satisfying, when seen from this 3D angle, the ball will jump from one note to another, creating a nice music, but we are yet to go there. In the next step, we need to add suitable materials for our objects, so let's first select this ball, and turn on the rendered view mode. We need to have a dark background, then in the materials tab, let's create a new material, and then change the shader to an emission type shader. We can pick up a color here, based on our choice, and let's also turn up the strength to say 5. Then if you are using EV, you can also turn on this bloom option, to get a nice halo effect around our ball. Then for our musical notes, we'll use a combination of two shaders, and change from one to another, so let's open the shader editor. Here we are mixing one principled BSDF, with an emission shader, with the help of a mixed shader, and we need to keyframe this FAC suitably. If we change it to one, we'll get an emission type material for the notes. So we can either keyframe this value manually for each note, or we can automate this using the technique of collision detection. We have discussed this approach in our previous tutorial, the tutorial link is given below. Let's discuss here how to do it manually. We'll first split this editor again into two parts, and in the lower part, we'll switch over to the timeline editor. Now play it and then stop, right where the ball is about to touch the first note, you can go to the previous frame or the next frame to get the correct frame. Then for this FAC value, let's insert a keyframe, and then for the next frame, we'll change this value to 1, and we need another keyframe for this value. Now if we play the animation, it will look like the collision with the ball is initiating a change in its material, which looks really attractive. So you can use either of the two methods to detect the collision frames, the method of auto detection is better for a large number of notes. And once you complete this exercise for all the notes, you'll get a result like this, it will run faster when you render, and you can even use a different color for each of the notes. You'll notice that the ball does not roll or rotate, as it moves from one step to another. 
If we want it to also roll, we need to use friction, you'll probably remember that we had removed the friction value, when we added rigid body physics, in order to avoid any kind of deflection for our ball. If the rolling action is really important, we need to add a friction for the ball, as well as for the notes. But remember that the friction can also cause it to deflect from the center line, so you'll need to do a trade-off regarding the value of this friction parameter. Finally you can set up your camera and render the output. It's good to add some decorations into the video, and the background music is also very important. With this low lighting, you can render a good video even with EV, you don't necessarily need cycles for this. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.